Hello everybody and welcome to the second section of this series of videos on scientometrics. This is Dr. Vahid Arya Dust. So in this video I'm going to uh, provide a very brief introduction to scientometrics and also provide you with a list of uh, references that might be of some help for you if you are interested to read more about scientometrics. Scientometrics is concerned with the quantitative features and characteristics of science and scientific research. In fact, it has been translated into the science of science. Uh, Nalimov defined it as the quantitative methods of research on the development of science as an informational process. Basically, uh, main themes in this field include ways of measuring research quality and impact, understanding the process of citations, which is an important phenomenon in every field of research, uh, mapping scientific fields, uh, that's visualization, and the use of indicators in research policy and management. Um, and finally, uh, there are some fields that uh, overlap with scientometrics. One of the most famous ones uh, which has been uh, cited and referred to in the field of applied linguistics is bibliometrics. Bibliometrics has been defined as the application of mathematical and, and statistical methods to uh, books and other media of communication. Uh, bibliometrics is not the only uh, branch of science that overlaps with uh, scientometrics. There are other branches but I have uh, specified it here because, uh, like I said, it has been used in applied linguistics. Other fields that uh, overlap with scientometrics are represented by these authors in this uh, useful diagram. So you see scientometrics with, which overlaps with webometrics, with uh, cybermetrics, with bibliometrics as, as stated, and infometrics. Um, for more information, you can refer to this paper if you're interested. Um, one of the techniques that is often used in scientometric analysis is called uh, co-citation analysis. Uh, it, has an it has several advantages uh, which actually helps us quite a lot especially uh, for uh, theory postulation. So um, first of all let's define co-citation analysis. Um, when two or more publications cite or co-cite one or more common publication, we can say that they have co-cited uh, another paper. Here is how Wikipedia actually uh, defines co-citation. It's really a very useful diagram, so I would like to spend just a few moments to walk you through the diagram. So um, document A and document B are not related directly. However, they have been cited by documents E, D, and C. That, therefore, they are co-cited. Uh, this is a visualization of co-citation. The, the more, uh, he, the, this sentence is also important. The more co-citations two documents receive, the higher their co-citation strengths, and the more likely they are semantically, and I would like to add thematically, related. So if there, there is a large number of papers that cite documents A and B, uh, uh, then we can say that these two documents are, among other things, are most likely uh, thematically related to each other. Now I'm going back to the slides, so, uh, and I'm, I'm reviewing the advantages of co-citation analysis. Uh, one of the advantages is that it offers the use of extensive bi uh, bibliographic data which we can download from the Web of Science uh, or Scopus or other databases, um, uh, for example, like Dimensions, which is, um, uh, which is actually recently uh, adopted into uh, CiteSpace, the software package that we, we use. Uh, the other characteristic or advantage of co-citation analysis is that it, it helps us reduce the inconvenience of analyzing huge data sets and it helps us provide a quantitative method or computation of those co-citations. Uh, it also leverages computer programs for visualizing and text mining. Uh, the, like I said, the, the program we use is CiteSpace. And finally, it allows us as researchers to produce quantitative interpretations of the past 
and and the present state of uh, specialties and perhaps make some predictions about the future of specialties. Uh, I would like to uh, um, pause for, for a short moment here to quickly show some of the papers that we have been able to publish using co-citation analysis and I would like to stress that they, I, uh, I have uh, found the technique especially useful for theory building. One of them is uh, in computer assisted language learning which was about the uh, uh, frontiers of eye tracking research in language studies where we used a co-citation technique. The, the other one was uh, a scientometric study of rush measurement where we also applied the document co-citation analysis and finally uh, uh, this is the most recent one where we reviewed a, um, a large data set on listening and reading subskills. Like I said I find that this technique is really useful for theory building and that's one of the novel applications of the methods. The procedures of generating and validating co-citation networks can be visualized in this way. We start by uh, we we start by acquiring the data, uh, as I have explained in a previous video, from, for example, the Web of Science or Scopus. I haven't made uh, any videos about how to acquire data from Scopus, but the procedures are the same, and I'll uh, try to make one video for that. Uh, then we start to analyze data process and analyze the data and finally we visualize it. When visualization is over then we start the process of validation and it comes in perhaps four stages. The validation of everything that we have identified that includes the networks and uh, what we call the bursts. And bursts are uh, influential papers or publications. I will explain that in, in the next slide. Uh, then we look into the internal consistency of the networks we have developed and the validity of uh, the communities that we have identified and then the stability of the results. So let's, let's go through the rest of the slides to see how we can achieve these. First of all, some terminologies. Scientometrics, or to be more specific, co-citation analysis uh, has quite a few different types. The first and perhaps the most prominent one is this DCA, that's document co-citation analysis. Document co-citation analysis is uh, is a method, let me just draw some uh, graphs here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So DCA, document co-citation analysis um, is, is perhaps the most powerful of all because it helps us understand the relationship between uh, different documents and I think you probably hear the uh, barking dog of my neighbor. I'm sorry about it. This is uh, uh, our first day of work from home. You probably know that uh, if you're listening to the video now, uh, now during this period, you know that the whole world is, is uh, grappling with this COVID-19 virus. So when you are uh, working from home, yes, those kind of background noises are probably uh, inevitable. I apologize for that if you hear that. Uh, so author, author co-citation analysis is, is the second one and the other types include country co-citation analysis and journal co-citation analysis. Uh, that's one part of the story. The other part is through using these uh, techniques we can create clusters clusters of thematically related publications or authors who, who have focused on uh, similar themes or journals or countries etc. Um, and there are some indices for us to look into the internal consistency and validate uh, those uh, clusters that we have created and the networks that uh, have been developed. Uh, these include Sigma, uh, the index of burstness, modularity Q or just Q, and centrality. I will explain these in the next slides. So let's move to the next slide and see uh, what document called citation analysis is. I'm going to just elaborate on DCA and also author called citation analysis pretty briefly, but whatever I say is um, literally applicable to uh, journal called citation analysis and also uh, 
uh, country co-citation analysis. So DCA is a technique to identify scholarship that has received peer recognition indicated by citation patterns. It helps uh, to understand important uh, past contributions to the field of research we're investigating and it uh, is to measure the frequency of jointly cited documents that's co-cited documents uh, what I showed you here is actually one example of document co-citation analysis okay so for uh, uh, author co-citation analysis, we have similar definitions and we have similar applications. This technique is used to identify underlying specialties in a field in terms of groups of authors who were cited together in relevant literature. And its uh, focus is on a network of cited authors that are connected by co-citation links. So in DCA, the focus is uh, uh, the network of documents which are connected by co-citation links, but here the focus is authors which are connected by uh, links. So you can imagine that they have a lot in common because documents are, well, are, are generated by authors. Okay, so through these techniques you can do clustering and after that, this is something that we actually found in, in uh, the, the most recent paper that I published um, in the system as I showed you. Uh, uh, I referred to this earlier in this video as a capacity for theory building and it's really good because uh, you can identify influential works in your field and then identify what you're looking for exactly. For example here I was looking for comprehension subskills as you see right here in the middle uh, at the center of this, uh, of this uh, graph. And this was not generated by Citespace. If you go to the paper, uh, you'll find how to generate this. It's really useful and quite straight, uh, easy and quite straightforward to generate uh, graphs like this. Uh, it has an online application which is easy to use. So you can you can use it for clustering and also for theory building in different ways. And this, at some point, can be referred to. Uh, as, when I say at some point, I mean uh, if you have enough information and enough data and you're really confident about the conclusion that you're drawing then you can you can claim that you're looking at the intellectual basis of that particular specialty you are you're looking at and each of these sub skills which we identified in that uh, research investigation are uh, used or investigated in one or more than one papers now, I mentioned that we need to validate the results after we uh, investigate uh, um, the, uh, after we generate the, the networks. We validate the results through using two kinds of metrics or uh, statistics. One is temporal metrics, the other one is structural metrics. Temporal metrics include citation bursteness and sigma. And structural metrics include the average silhouette score modularity Q and betweenness centrality and for more information you can look at these references that I have cited here. Citation bursteness actually refers to a sudden increase in the citation count of a publication and that sudden increase is important uh, so you you can consider uh, or view that publication as a burst. A sigma on the other hand is an indicator of scientific novelty and the larger the sigma, the more novel the paper. So for these two statistics or metrics, uh, the lower bound or the minimum is zero and there is no upper bound. So um, the larger they get, uh, the more influential the paper and the more novel the publications are. For structural metrics, uh, we need to look into the average silhouette score. The silhouette score is uh, an indication of the homogeneity of clustering because through co-citation analysis, you cl like I said, you cluster your publications into several networks or sub-networks. Uh, so you, you, you look at the silhouette score to find out if, if everything inside that network, that's every publication inside that network, uh, is consistent or homogeneous with the rest of the publications. 
with values closer to 1 suggesting high precision in clustering. In other words, uh, we can say that uh, the silhouette score is basically a metric of how similar those papers are to their own cluster compared with other clusters. So uh, values that are closer to 1 indicate that the paper has a good match with the cluster it has been placed in. Therefore, uh, it, the, the larger the silhouette score, the better it is. And the maximum is, is 1. If, uh, if uh, the value is 0, it indicates that there is little or no confidence in uh, the homogeneity of, of the paper or the papers within that particular cluster. And if it's, it's minus 1, it means that you, you have only a few clusters or you have too many clusters, depending on the number of the clusters you have. And then you have to do more clustering. Uh, now these concepts might sound a little bit uh, uh, inaccessible, but when I start to run a, a site, a site space and you see the analysis that we uh, that uh, I will uh, demonstrate for you, uh, they make more sense to you. Modularity Q is a measure of clustering quality or whether the network can be broken down into discrete clusters. It ranges between 0 and 1 with indices closer to 1 suggesting higher quality in clustering. So that's uh, pretty much like uh, the silhouette score in the sense that the higher or the closer to 1 the, the better it is and the more confidence we have um, in the clustering accuracy or precision. And finally between a centrality I think this is quite straightforward and easy to to grasp. It's the degree to which a node is situated between two or more nodes in a given network. Uh, so assume, uh, let's assume that uh, there are some papers which are not related. But then there is one particular paper, all of which have cited. That's there is one one particular paper, or n we can also call it node or publication, right at the center of all of these otherwise irrelevant publications. So this paper that uh, connects the rest of those publications because it has been co-cited by all of them would have a high betweenness centrality index. So the higher the betweenness centrality index, the higher the impact and potentially, um, you know, um, the paper could be considered to be potentially revolutionary. Uh, so in conclusion, we need to always uh, look at uh, temporal metrics and structural metrics to make sure that the uh, uh, co-citation uh, co networks that we have generated are valid and have internal consistency. Now, I think that that's all about it. Uh, you can go to the SiteSpace website and download uh, the software. So then we will uh, get started and see what we can get out of uh, the software. Thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a like. Um, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present uh, a demonstration of uh, site space pretty soon. Uh, stay tuned in and have a good day.